So let's go through a little bit of Mizu and the different things that have happened in our life at the young beginnings when often our personality is developed that ends up making her who she is and who she's going to become. The world that we live in gives us our identity and it's developed really early. From the ages of seven to eight, we already have a sense of who we are and what is our place in this world. So if the world looks at us as something to be pitied, a monster, aberration, something that is not good enough, then that really does sink in, even if it goes beyond logic. Remember, anything that you hear enough times it changes the way you look at you and you look at the world, even if it's not true. We need the tribe to survive. Because we work in groups, humans need others. It really is important to have a place in the world, to feel like you're an outsider, to feel like you don't belong, which I think that a lot of people have gone through. It changes us. It changes our dynamic of the way that we see our world. And if we are looked at as less than, and we then in part see ourselves as less than because neurons that fire together, they just become a wiring, especially when it happens really young. When our brain is developing, it almost hard sets. It completely alters who you would be if you felt loved, cared about, and safe. And that sense of safety changes your attachment type as well. Kids can be so cruel. They can be so mean. They'll say things without thought. The part of their brain that develops that correlation of actions and consequences to that hasn't been developed yet, but they still have that impetus of wanting what they want. So they end up having all of these drives without the thought of what could happen to that. And often that leads into this little mob mentality, this kind of Lord of the Flies reaction as, People are going to follow the strongest person in their group so that they don't get bullied themselves, even if it goes against what they think they should do. You want to go? Go ahead. Just jump. And what happens to us when we're bullied? Intense bullying is really damaging for us. It changes our self-esteem. It changes how we see ourselves and our role and our importance. It also alters our sense of safety, especially if we don't have a safe parental group. It makes us see the world as a dangerous place. And in some cases that is very accurate. But even in places that it isn't accurate, that the world is actually safe, this sense of bullying makes us not trust other people, which can end up changing our attachment type to becoming either avoidant or anxiously attached, where we don't really trust relationships. We don't trust that people will have the best interest at heart for us. And then all of our personal interrelationships will be altered because of that also. And so it can be really damaging to those group dynamics that we go through, where we're always waiting for someone to stab us in the back. You think you would fight us? An orphan? I know what you are. Your mother killed herself because your father is a white devil. <laughs> Emma's like so angry. <laughs> He's so angry. But sometimes that's what happens. Kids can be horrifically cruel. They aim to hurt. They want to win. They don't really think of damaging things. And often we look back on our childhood and the things that we've said and done and we're shocked and kind of that, that thought of how could I say this? How could I have done this or been a part of that? And remember, we just weren't thinking. And often if you have older siblings that have teased and bothered you, you've learned that that's the way that you relate. We're mimics, so we often do what happens with those around us. And so if you were bullied by your siblings, that's gonna be the way that you deal with it. And what it does is it resets the hierarchy. So it puts you in a higher rank and people underneath you, which makes you feel more safe by stepping on other people. Of course, there's other ways to do it, but that often is what happens, especially in early childhood. And for some people that haven't matured, also when they're adults. 
unfortunately. Now, I'm gonna say something that's a little touch controversial, but being teased and bothered is actually preventative for us. It actually is protective. It learns for us to grow a little bit of skin. Not to this level, not when it's all the time. That's exceptionally damaging. To be able to be teased and to be able to be bothered, it can also give you some resiliency that you've been through this, so nothing else is gonna bother you. So sometimes through these hardships, we actually become more strengthened. And I think that for Mizu, that's the case that has hardened her. She no longer cares. She's been so brutalized that nothing else matters. To her case, it's not in a healthy way. It's maladaptive. She's shut out everything else. You want to be able to have enough skin that someone says something you are not constantly offended. There's a huge difference between mild teasing and bugging someone versus bullying and actually trying to go through character assassination, trying to make their life horrible. And I think that we need to draw the line between both of those things and help people become resilient and not destroy their self-esteem. Told you. Round eye. Like a dog. For Mizu, this definitely made her more avoidant attachment. It made her not trust people and know that she can't depend upon anyone else but herself, which is very common for avoidant attachment types. Do you know who I am? I am Hachimon, the Flesh Trader. No one messes with Hachi. So this part kind of goes to your feeling. Like right away, my thoughts are that, oh, she's going to defend Ringo because that would be wrong, that that's her sense of honor. But it isn't actually. It's that she recognizes the gun. She's single-minded in her focus and she's not gonna let anything get in her way or slow down her need for revenge. And so everything that she has in front of her are steps in order to get her one task completed. Even even if it goes to her sense of empathy or care. And one of the great clues to that is what happens after the fight. If you want it, take it! Uh, no! It's a filthy gun from a filthy place. I want to know who sold it to you. I bought it from Heiji Shindo. Where is Heiji Shindo? I don't know! I swear. You dead-eyed, half-blooded demon bastard! You look like an unreal! She doesn't save the two girls that are going to be sold. She doesn't protect Ringo. She leaves after she has the information that she wants. But does she lack empathy? Is she only analytical and single-minded or is she suppressing it because of the way that she's seen the world to be and that she's learned that she has to rely on herself and not let anything get in her way? This travel pass is invalid. It's my husband's. It's invalid without him. He died. I make the baskets. He only sold them. Please. Or I can't feed my children. You know the rules. Women can't travel without a chaperone. Next. So it's the first thing Travel is that path. she sees this heartfelt story and she walks past the woman and her young child. And so it goes again to the thought of she's lacking in empathy. Next. Please. <gasps> And I like that nothing in her face often betrays the way that she feels about things. She's really good at being able to suppress her feelings because sharing too much, shedding too much of how you feel emotionally often gives other people an understanding of if you feel scared, if you feel upset. In order to be able to control your emotions makes you a better fighter. It allows you to be able to keep to the task at hand and not let emotions get the better of you. And that's 
that's our clue, right? That's the clue. She left the golden comb so that this mother and child would be able to pay to be able to get into the city, take care of themselves and feed them. So that's that little tiny bit that if she could, if she had the time, she does care. She cares about people and that it isn't that she is lacking in emotion and care and empathy. It's that it has been suppressed because of the bullying, because of the teasing, because of being looked at as a monster, that that is what her identity is. So because of that, she's going to act accordingly. And that's the cool thing about Mizu, is that she has all of these other layers to her that we don't yet get to see. And so this is my first foray into Mizu. Let me know what your thoughts are of her and her lack or not of empathy in the comments below.